You have come to be friends, interact and commune with God Almighty. Jesus said, will you also go away? You can see the vulnerability in him. Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. I hope you understand and recognize that as much as we laud and as much as we applaud Peter for what he said, he still didn't get it. Because he was declaring, I'm here and I'm going to stay here because I know what you got for me. I'm not going to hold you much longer. I really promise I'm not. As the level of commitment began to be elevated, many disciples began to leave Him and walk no more with Him. Think about it. Think about it. I've seen it happen so many times when church stops being enjoyable. I don't go as much as I used to as if the fault belongs to somebody else. When I don't have a pressing need, when everything's going all right in my life, you know what I don't do? Don't pray quite as much. There is a world, you hear me church, and here's the reason for this message. There is a world that is sick and tired of superficial, shallow friendships. Facebook, hear me right now. Facebook has redefined the term friend as well as the idea of what a friend is. You say, well, I got a thousand friends. You're a liar. I know I probably ain't supposed to say that word. It ain't politically correct or something, but you're a fibber. You're shady. It's just because somebody gets on your page and sees you got 1,243 friends. No, you don't. Oh, I'm about to preach right now. And if one of them who lives in Upper Sandusky, Ohio, whose name is Barbara, G, Barbara Jean Telepanort, likes one of your posts, you get out in your front yard and do a dance and run around and be so happy. We have got, you hear me well, we have got to get rid of that stinking terminology and ideology in the church. You ain't looking for the Lord. Like, like, like. No, you want to have an encounter with the Lord. I don't want some kind of impersonal touch with the Lord. I want to get all up in the presence of the Lord. I want the power of the Holy Ghost all on me. I want the power of the Holy Ghost to change me. I want the power of the Holy Ghost to fill me. I'm not interested in that like, 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 rain on that like. This is a love relationship and I love him because he first loved me. We have become comfortable. That's good enough. If we aren't careful, we'll review our relationship with God in a similar light. It has redefined everything about who we are. And now it's crept into the church. Everything that you have in your relationship with God is predicated upon who you are as a person. Because that's all you have. That's all you have. When you say, I love you, Lord, it's based upon the revelation of love that's on this plane. Because we don't fully understand. We don't fully understand. That's why I preached to you some time ago, when that which is perfect has come. When you receive the perfect love of God, and you realize that this is a, an, a mutually exclusive relationship that I'm not think about that I thought of it this morning the people that lived under the law you know why they did what they did brother McKinney you know why they did what they did they were scared not to how many people are living for God under the same premise well, I don't really want to go to church but I know if I miss like three services in a row brother GL is going to find out where I'm at I talked to somebody this morning. It was kind of comical. It was innocent. They weren't being conniving or malicious. They started trying to tell me where they were Sunday night. And then you know what he said? You know what? I really don't have an excuse. 
I could think up all kinds of things to tell you, but the truth of the matter is I don't really have an excuse. And what's more, I missed church and had a bunch of problems. And then the Lord reminded me, if you'd have went on to church and then took care of your stuff later, you may not have had no problems. What you think about that? All I know is the book says, put the Lord first. And everything else will line up. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. I want you to grasp a hold of this. We have got, I'm about to close. We have got to get rid of the ideology that if I don't do right, then he won't do this. So I'm going to go ahead and be faithful and I'm going to go ahead and give because I want my little blessing. That's no different than living under the law. He never, 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 never desired to continue that relationship. Because Brother Bobby, the Bible said the, the, the law made nothing better. You make a bunch of people just do what you say just because you happen to be the boss. What have you got? You're going to get fired and a new fellow's going to come in and they're going to do what he says and they ain't going to care what you say no more. But that's not how a relationship with God is. I know somebody's getting this this morning. This may not be, but for like, like two people, me and somebody else. A loss of true friendship. This morning, after I already had this, I googled friendship. And every article I saw talked about the loss of true friendship. So this is a God thing. A loss of true friendship has affected how we view God as a necessary inconvenience from our end and Him and our beck and call on His. We have arrived at a place, you hear me now, and I'm coming to a close. You come on to the music. We have arrived at a place where we respond most easily to where the greatest pressure is. That's why you can work all day with an ailment that'll keep you out of church. Yeah, I said it. I gotta go. I gotta stay home from church and rest up. Say that there, there goes there goes the flesh right there, man. You're gonna run about half of them off now. Let me tell you something, people that love God, people that are really interested in, in achieving a full relationship with God, you ain't got to worry about running them off. Amen. Only ones you got to worry about running off are the ones that just won't, can't wait to press like. We respond most easily where the greatest pressure is. Wherever we feel the greatest pressure, that's what we do. Well, I really don't want to do it, but I, you don't understand. I got to do this. No, what you ain't got to do nothing. But most of our relationships are so superficial. We just put a band aid on whichever one's bleeding right now. I, I gotta, I gotta meet the obligation for whatever's pulling on my coattail right this minute. And there sits a Savior who gave His entire life for you. Matter of fact, His existence is because of you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And He wants friendship. He wants relationship. Brother Larry, He don't want a bunch of people that come, Oh, I got to do right. I got to keep giving. I got to do... He wants people that, I can't wait. It's Sunday morning. Oh, and I've been in the middle of hell all week long, but I know where I can meet my Jesus. I know where I can get some relief, and it ain't about gimme, gimme, gimme. It's oh, I know people don't like this song. Some of them don't, but I want to lay back against him. And just, whoo, I knew, I feel Jesus up in the house right now. I knew, Lord, I knew if I could just get to you. 
I knew. And you know what? He values those relationships so much more. Yeah, he blesses you. You know, when you show up every six months because you got, you know, uh, uh, an infected nose hair and you need to, everybody to bind together and pray. But, but it's those people that just want to come be with him. I ain't coming because the pastor might be disappointed. I'm not coming for, but to satisfy anybody else. I'm not coming to make sure my spot gets took. I'm coming because we're friends. I'm coming because we're friends. I don't have time to be be friends or to be with friends. I don't care to adapt. I am who I am. Like me or hate me, I don't care. Which is a ridiculous concept. First off, it's not true. But I remember some of you. There's a few I'm thinking about this morning. Maybe not even all here. I remember back years ago when you'd move heaven and earth to be with somebody. Get up early in the morning and go somewhere with somebody. But then you got hurt, or then you got your feelings hurt, or then they, they went with somebody else. And I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to meddle in this too much, but I, I, I am completely amazed at this idea of I can only have one friend at a time. I'm amazed at it. I've never had much more fun in my life than when the yard was crawling with kids look like roaches. Oh, y'all don't know what that's like, do you? You cut the light on when there's roaches. They go nuts. That's what we look like. I, I can't imagine. But I our, our, received this this morning. Our concept of what friendship is has affected our walk with God. And he's just jumped into the line of what have you done for me lately? There's an old song. You may have to you may have to lower that down just a little bit so I can be in the right key. <laughs> yeah, that's just a private joke. I don't even know one key from the other. But every now and again, Brother Pete, I go into prayer singing this song, and I don't even know all the words right this minute. But it says Maybe tomorrow.